Well, I'm sitting here on the deck thinking of some things I've been reading lately. And you know, we all know that with Photoshop, it's hard to trust photos or images anymore on the internet. But from some new technology, I think it's going to be hard to trust videos or sound bites. Let me tell you what I found. Now, Adobe recently showcased Vovo, which kind of is the Photoshop for voice. This was in their idea lab, and it doesn't mean they're making it, but believe me, it was pretty impressive. And I'll leave the video links down below. I mean, basically, this software could make me say something entirely different, and it would look like I said it. Not to be left out, Google's DeepMind division has been working on something called WaveNet, and it can turn text into speech and mimic anyone's speech. So you can see what could happen here. You can also hear that we have a, uh, I believe it is a chipmunk because my cat is outside trying to interrupt my video. And then a research team at the University of Alabama, let me read this, has been working on voice impersonation with only three to five minutes of audio of a victim's voice taken live or from YouTube videos or radio shows, an attacker can create a synthesized voice that can fool both humans and voice biometric security systems used by some banks and smartphones. The attacker can then talk into a microphone and the software will convert it so the words sound like they are being spoken from the victim, whether it's over the phone or a radio show. Well, that's not good either, is it? And we're not done yet. Then there's the fake app, which is one word, and it was released by a Reddit user called DeepFake. And it can really seamlessly meld images. And of course, what was the first thing it was tried for? Putting celebrities' faces on porn. But you can see how else this could be used. It could be terribly used for bullying somebody in school or in a date revenge type of thing. It's pretty dangerous software. And then there's something called the face to face. And that is the number two. And this kind of allows you to be a puppeteer and put words in people's mouths in videos. And it was developed by the Max Planck Institute and the University of Nuremberg and Stanford University. And it is able to create a real-time reenactment of a person talking and map it onto another person's face. And the result is you can make a person say anything. And you gotta check out these links below. As this technology evolves, it'll be very difficult to see and hear what is real and what is fake. And the opposite is true. We might dismiss something that is true as being fake. And, you know, we have a political climate that calls anything uh, disparaging news to be fake news. So it makes it kind of confusing. So think of what could happen if algorithmically Facebook and Twitter and maybe even YouTube is flooded with these hoax videos and statements. And, I mean, it's all across the board. Well, it can influence public opinion because people will often believe what they see, especially if it goes along with their beliefs, and tend not to question something. And that's very scary. That could be how the Russians could influence other countries' political elections. But here in the United States, we have an act called the Smith-Munt Act, which makes it illegal to produce propaganda by the government to be used on U.S. citizens. This can have far-reaching consequences. In 2013, a pro-Assad group known as the Syrian Electronic Army hacked into the Twitter account of the Associated Press and broadcast a fake report about explosions in the White House. The Dow Jones Industrial Average then dropped nearly 150 points, 136 billion in market value. Now the market quickly recovered, but during that time, uh, unscrupulous people, the hackers, could have uh, shorted the index funds 
and made a healthy, healthy profit. So you can see that this can be used for criminal activities. I just wanted to acquaint you with some of these new technologies. I really hope you check out those links below. And DARPA is working on some software process to be able to tell if something is fake or not. But what can the rest of us do? Well, I found a site for children that gives some very good advice. It's on a website called Conversation and it's entitled how to spot fake news, an expert's guide for young people. And you know what? I think it's pretty good for all ages. So here goes. One, find out about the source. Look at the website where the story comes from to see if the story is well presented. If the images are clear and if the text is written well and without any spelling errors or exaggerated language. If you're not sure, try clicking on the About Us section and check that there's a clear outline explaining the work of the organization and its history. Two, look at the author. Check if they are real, reliable, and trustworthy. Look for other pieces they have written and what outlets they have written for. If they haven't written anything else, or if they write for websites that look unreliable, think twice about believing what they say. Three, check that the article contains references and links to other news stories, articles, and authors. Check on those links and check if they seem reliable and trustworthy. Four, do a Google reverse image search. This is an excellent tool which will allow you to search Googles by images rather than words. You will see all the other web pages that have similar images and it tells you the other sites where the images have been used and if they've been used out of context. And five, see if the story you're reading about is being shared on any other mainstream news outlet such as BBC News or Sky News. If it is, then you can feel more sure that the story is not fake because these organizations take special care to check their sources and very rarely publish a story without having a second source to back it up. So there you have it. And it ends with saying, don't share stories with others until you're for sure. And you know what? That's what we all need to do. Really check out what you get in your feeds and see if they're a hoax or they are trying to shape your public opinion with misleading information or outright lies. I think that is important for all of us in today's digital world, especially with all these new software. You know, soon it'll be like the X-Files. It'll be trust no one. This is Prepper Popuri saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, and as always, thank you so much for your support. And thumbs up if you found this video interesting.